What is up, dudes? The purpose of this video today is to teach you a little bit about the historical abolitionists that I've been telling you to complete. And again, that assignment is due Friday. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you just a little bit um, of the first six questions in Friday's assignment. I'm not going to take you through those three historical spotlights, but I will by the end of this video show you how to access the resources because I know a few of you were confused about that. Um, so I'm going to turn my screen on now so that you're able to see what I see and away we go. So uh, first and foremost, we've been talking a lot about the split between the North and the South, the Republicans and the Democrats and how the issue of slavery was really starting to tear the United States apart. And so what I've been telling you is that generally what you have in the North are people who were against slavery. And now we're going to throw this term abolition in there or abolitionists, which are people who were in favor of abolition. Um, and you have people in the South who were really happy about the profits of the horrible practice of slavery. So the first thing that you should be getting down is abolition, this definition that's here. So abolition is the act of getting rid of a certain institution. Now, if you've been paying attention, what you'll know is that obviously we're talking about abolishing slavery, getting rid of slavery in the United States. So in order to move forward, I want us to just recap just a little bit here. So in 1807 and 1808, this actually dates back to before the War of 1812, the United States and Great Britain both agreed to no longer import African slaves. It's at this time that the cotton gin is actually going to come back into play. And if you guys remember, I had uh, passed around some cotton in class two and told you that it really was kind of this uh, very inventive way to clean as much cotton as possible. Clean. Um, so, well, we knew it was favorable in the South, but why would it be favorable in the North? Again, this is a little bit of review. Uh, we talked about the cotton gin, but we also know that the United States was trying not to export or send out any of their goods. They wanted to become self-sufficient. So we had these plantations in the South, and they were sending these raw goods, cotton, up to the North, and they were manufacturing goods like clothing and things of that nature. Uh, cotton actually ends up getting the name King Cotton. It's going to really be the baseline of our economy. Remember, once again, you guys can pause this video whenever you'd like. Were there abolitionists in the South? It sounds kind of uh, contradictory if you ask me, but the South is obviously where all the plantations were, where all the slavery was. But there were people who were very much so against slavery in the South. And when you think about it, uh, the reason that there would be abolitionists in the South is because they're seeing it firsthand. And we know now from learning about slavery, it's a horrible, horrible practice. It's very cruel. And so people who are seeing it, it's not like they were immune to it. They were seeing all the, the horrors of what slavery actually was. So we have uh, these two sisters called the Grimke sisters. And the Grimke sisters were these young girls who worked on a plantation. And uh, learning from last uh, Tuesday's lesson about the uh, women's rights movement in the 1840s, we also had the anti-slavery movement. These Grimke sisters were two key uh, figures tying the anti-slavery and women's movements together. And they would talk about the horrors of that, and they felt that women had a major platform to do that. Um, this is obviously the case because people were exposed to seeing slavery. So what was the Underground Railroad? i um, quite sure that you guys have heard of this before, uh, but the Underground Railroad is not like an actual railroad itself. It was a series of uh, houses, like safe houses and things of that nature, that slaves would, uh, they call them freedmen, would escape from their plantations and they would go to these different safe houses until they would get to the north. Um, and not just in the north, because in 1850, there's going to be an act that's called the Fugitive Slave Act uh, that says that you have to send back any slaves that escape. And uh, so a lot of slaves would also go into Canada as well, because obviously that law would not apply if you're out of the country. So a lot of slaves would escape to Canada as well. New York's going to play a pretty major role in that, which we'll see next week. Were there any abolitionist movement successful? Uh, yes, they, it does expose um, the realities to Northerners. So if you think about it, there are probably a bunch of people in this time as well who really are kind of indifferent to slavery because they're not seeing it. 
But now that we have these Grimke sisters going on these uh, tours talking about it, we also have um, a book that's going to come out. It's called Uncle Tom's Cabin that we'll look at next week as well. That's really going to expose people to what slavery really is. Um, what were these uh, were these 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 movements the cause of abolition of slavery in the United States? It's an important first step, but ultimately we're going to fight a war over slavery, which is called the Civil War, um, and that will ultimately be the cause of abolishment. So now that I've taken you through that lecture, I just want to talk to you about how you can access the resources for this. So. Frederick Douglass actually doesn't have a hyperlink because it's an old one. But if you're trying to answer the questions for William Lloyd Garrison, which is this column here, you want to click on his name. And the name is going to take you to biography.com. little piece here about this man right here. So just uh, giving you a little bit of background about him. He was somebody who had a newspaper and he would kind of um, send to the masses about why slavery should be abolished. Harriet Tubman, if you click on her name, she has six questions. She's the most, she is the conductor. She's the person who uh, kind of organized the entire Underground Railroad system. I believe you're going to go to a PDF here. And in hers, it's a very long reading. I don't want you to read this whole thing unless you're super interested in it. Of course, this is a poster in our room. Um, all of these little italicized and bold parts here are the subsections within the document that you want to find. So the making of a fugitive, you see here the making of a fugitive. And so you're going to read that part and try to find the answer to that question. And then lastly, the Frederick Douglass one. So Frederick Douglass, he, uh, it is not a, a, uh, a hyperlink for him. He's actually going to be, I'm going to go to the Google Classroom here. His is actually a PDF that is attached to the assignment itself. So please make sure that you are using the appropriate resource for him as I talk you through this and try to stall as much time as possible. <sighs> Excuse me. His, once again, is a PDF. That you want to click on. So you see here, Frederick Douglass. This is his resource here, a short little biography. Frederick Douglass is actually going to write a book, um, uh, an autobiography, uh, that also exposes a lot of uh, the horrors of slavery. So uh, I believe I've taken you through just about everything that I can here. And if you continue to have questions, please just reach out and ask me in the private comments. Deuces, homies. <laughs>